Hi, my name is Selena, and this is going to be a tag video. I'm going to do the book coffee tag, and I wasn't tagged by anyone, but I saw this tag going around. It looked like fun, and so why not? The originator of the tag is Bangity Bangs. I will leave a description down below. So, number one is Black Coffee. Name a book that you found hard to get into, but that has hardcore fans. Um, for me, that's going to be Stephen King's The Dark Tower series. I have heard from two reliable sources many years ago that I should read this series. Um, been meaning to have book one. I just, I don't know, I started it and it's just a little hard to get into. I've never read any Stephen King, actually. So I guess Stephen King is an author that many people like, but I'm just having a hard time getting into Stephen King. Not to say I will never, but having a hard time. Okay, number two. Peppermint Mocha. Name a book that makes you think of holiday season or like around, you know, December, Christmas time. First one is, is Li uh, what is it? The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe uh, by C.S. Lewis. And the second is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Um, this one, just because it takes place in a world that is steeped in snow and wintery type effects. Um, and Chris, uh, Father Christmas even makes an appearance in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And then Little Women, just because of the scenes in, um, where Beth plays on the piano and that's the, it's a very, you know, family kind of book. And I, when I think of that time of year, I always think of, like, family and being with my sisters and brothers. So, yeah, these two. Number three is Hot Chocolate. What's your favorite children's book? So I have two that I'm going to show you. Yeah, I like to do more than just one book because I it's, it's hard for me to narrow it down to just one. So I have, fortunately, The Milk by Neil Gaiman, which is just super fun to read. Um, and I read this with my younger sister. I would say this is like a elementary book age book, but yeah, there's like pictures inside, and it's a ridiculous story, just fun to read, and yeah, I really like the cover, the cover art's pretty cool too. And then this book I read as a child, and it's Mafaro's Beautiful Daughters by John Stito, uh, I believe, but it's kind of a uh, African retelling of the Cinderella story and the artwork is just fantastic. Let me give you a little peek at some of the artwork. Let's see, so I actually heard about this book first on the Reading Rainbow a as a child and went to go get the book after that. So it's one of my favorites. Number four is Double Shot of Espresso. So name a book that. Had you on edge from start to finish. Again, I have two. First is Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. Uh, I was a latecomer to this. I read the book because the movie was coming out. And so I got the book and just loved it. I just ate it all up. I mean, my book is very worn because it took, it, I just took it everywhere with me and I read it and enjoyed it very much. Yeah, just the action and the pacing was just, I couldn't put it down. And the second one is one that you probably have seen a lot of. Um, sorry, but it's true. If you have yet to start reading the Mistborn series by Brandon Sanderson, you need to read that. Um, this first book, The Final Empire, had me on edge. I just kept wanting to know what was going to happen. Um, and he wrote it in such a way that I never to say I knew what was coming. And the end just totally threw me. So, yeah, this was a, a great book. Okay, number five is Starbucks. Name a book that you see everywhere. Um, for me, that's going to be either Shadow and Bone, just because I see a lot of people talking about it, reviewing it, saying that this series is one of their favorite series. And so, yeah, we'll see. I've not read it yet, but it's a book that I see everywhere. The reason why I got it is because I see it everywhere, and I just kind of want to know what it all what's it all about. 
And the next one I'm going to show you is a book that I see because it's going to be turned into a BBC miniseries, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. Um, I started reading this, but put it down. It was just a little hard to read. Um, not that it's a bad story. I just think that the omniscient narrator threw me. I wasn't quite ready for that type of storytelling, but it is written very well, and I'm planning on finishing it before the BBC show comes out on June 30th. I sound like a commercial, but hopefully this will be really awesome. And, yeah, I've seen this a lot now. Number six is a hipster coffee shop. Uh, give an independent book a shout-out. Um, that's going to be Archetype the Thief by Anai Crabtree. And I got this as a Goodreads giveaway, actually, and was very happy that I got it. It was a great book, easy to read, very action-packed. It is a fairy tale retelling, um, kind of similarly situated like other fairy tale retellings where the world of, of fairy tales and our world kind of are bridging. And so some of the characters and types or character themes that you see in fairy tales are coming into our world and then havoc ensues and then there's a girl in the book actually takes its um dual perspective uh they the two girls in the story um are both new to a town they need to first get acclimated to a new school new people um but then they also start to start to find things out about themselves and how they are connected to this other fairy tale type world, um, but yeah, so it's it's nice. Now, like I do think that the dual perspective worked well for this story uh, because the two characters have the two female characters have very distinct voices. There is another perspective in there, um, a boy who is so funny and so sarcastic, um, just great fun to read. Um, but the two main female lead characters is was just written very very well, and I'm hoping she finishes the series. I think there was going to be three. Um, the second book, at least as far as I know, has not yet come out, but I'm hoping that she's going to finish the series. Oh, my phone turned off. Here we go. Number seven. Oops, you accidentally got decaf. Name a book that you were expecting more from. Um, so, I'm going to show you two books, and it's not that they were bad, I just, I don't know. So, the House of the Scorpion by Nancy Farmer, and The Glass Sentence by S.E. Groves. Um, I liked them both. I read this one more recently, and this one I read last summer when it first came out. Now, I had heard a lot about The House of the Scorpion, and I think I just built this up in my head to be more than what it was. The story was fine. Characters were written fine. I just was underwhelmed, but I think that was all my doing and had nothing to do with the book because the book, as you can see, has won many awards and so this was probably on my end, um, expecting more than I probably should have. And this one, I did see some hype, not a lot of hype, but some with the publication of this book. I do know that the second one is due to come out sometime this year, if I'm not mistaken. I did see that on Goodreads. Um, and I will continue with this story. It was just so different from anything that I've ever read that, I don't know, maybe underwhelmed was not the right word, but I was I was kind of left with like, like, huh? Like, what did I just read? I, I read it. I wanted to know what was happening to the characters. I wanted to get to the end. But I was just kind of left with like, I probably need to reread it again is what I, it, it's boiling down to. But this was a really interesting book because the the world building and the magic is based around cartography, and which is the art of oh, map making. It's basically the map making process that generates the magic in this book. And I found that so different from anything that I've ever read that it that was a bit jarring and, yeah, it just kind of left me with, confusion a little bit at the end, but I think it's just because I need to reread it. Um, but yeah, and it's like really beautiful. Like, here's the inside cover. Totally decorated and beautiful and nice. And then 
this is kind of like translucent. And yeah, it's a really pretty book. Yeah. And the last question, turning my phone back on again, is the perfect blend. Uh, the book that was bitter, sweet, uh, but ended perfectly. So for me, that's going to be number one is books. Persuasion by Jane Austen. This book, um, yeah, it's it's bittersweet. It's just it's I think Austen's one of Austen's most mature works, if not the most mature work that she's written. Um, it's not as bubbly and bright as things like Emma or Pride and Prejudice, but it's also not as dark as Mansfield Park. But it's still um, something that is enjoyed, but it's a more realistic look at love and loss and loving again and family. So yeah, I, I love Persuasion. Then next would be Where the Heart Is by Billy Letts. Um, read this in middle school and it's such a great story. That, I mean, crying, laughter, the characters are just just they jump out off the page, literally. The writing really lets capture the feel of Midwestern America so well in her writing. The the way that they talk, the language. So yeah, and, you know, again, love, loss, and loving again is all in this book, and all types of of relationships, familial relationships, friendships. It's just a really, really good book. And then Winter's Tale by Mark Halperin. Um, again, another bittersweet tale about love and loss um, and then finding your heart again, I guess. Um, they did turn this into a movie, but don't judge the book by the movie. But yeah, this is a very good book. Bittersweet, but good book. So that's my book coffee tag. Hope you like it. If you have anything to say about any of the books that I suggested, you agree or disagree, please leave a comment down below. I've never said this before, but you can find me on Goodreads. I have a Twitter account, and I think they're all linked to my channel, so you can find me easily over there, and let's talk about books. Bye!